Ahsoka, Season 1, Episode 4. Thoughts? This episode is called Part 4, Fallen Jedi. So, spoilers for everything Star Wars leading up to and including this episode. Another episode I love, and before I get into it, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the Sega After Strikers, and I implore you to do so. And then there are a bunch of links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. So, let's dive into the episode. So yeah, they they cannot get the, the ship back in the air, and... You know, Ahsoka notes, uh, we face a tough choice. So whatever exactly she's talking about, it can't be whether or not she should cross her arms because she is 100% committed to that. And I really love the tension and suspense of this episode. You know, instead of just like, ooh, there's an attack on the ship, we see like a droid off in the, you know, yeah, seeing the ship and, you know, walking off to, to report it, you know, and later there's a, a twig snap before the droid fight starts. And, yeah, so once uh, Sabine starts readying the, the guns and, you know, all the, all the Mando stuff. I was hoping we would get some great Mando action. Not that we've been starred for it recently in live action. Not saying that, but always love to see it. You love to see it, folks. And, yeah, we, we do indeed get some really great stuff. The, the action in general is really, really great in this episode. The, the fight between the two droids felt like it was... Like, they sat down and thought, okay, how would two droids fight? You know, because they're not quite human. The the weight is slightly different, and the, you know, yeah. And it's, it's you know, part of it is just, like, punch, like, like almost like boxing. Not used to seeing that in Star Wars. Very, very welcome. Not a fan of the sport in general, in, in real life, but, you know, I like it in fiction. And, yeah, so, you know, when the, the ship gets in even worse state, you know, Sabine is like, oh, the, the droid made it worse. And, you know, immediately Ahsoka's like, he wouldn't. There's something wrong. And, <laughs> yeah, they, so the, and, another great action scene, and they managed to take out all the, the people there. And Hu Yang manages to say something positive about Sabine Wren. Jeez, how hard did that other droid hit him on the head? Flipped him from evil to good. And <laughs> when you're a general, you can disobey orders too, sweetie. And... Yeah, so, you know, if Morgan's... Calculations are accurate, and they always are. And yeah, very, very much enjoyed when the the duos pair off and and fight, you know. And and I really like that the fight between Ahsoka and the the I can't believe I'm blanking on the 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 crap. Uh, it's not conquistador, but it's one of those. Anyway, that's what I'm going with. Until I actually, I suppose, is it possible that it's somewhere on the okay, Inquisitor? That's it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, the fight between Ahsoka and the Inquisitor goes by fast, and that is something. You know, if you talk to people who use swords to fight in real life, they'll tell you. You don't want to drag it out. You know, the longer you go, the greater the chance you die. So you'll you'll want to try to finish it quickly. You know, and yeah, I I quite appreciate this. Uh, you know, the the way lightsabers are handled on this show in general. And now that he like exploded, I I hope that puts to rest the idea that that was Ezra. There's no way they would do that to Ezra after all this time waiting you will regret that like my bangs before you 
And yeah, I like that Ahsoka actually talks with, with Balin, who of course uses Anakin to try to mess with her. You know, instead of just like jumping directly into a fight or just like saying bland taunts, which I kind of felt, you know, in the prequels, there was too much of like they don't actually stop to discuss why they're doing what they're doing. And I acknowledge, you know, that's also a trope. I get why some people find that very frustrating. I just think it fits really well here. And let's keep in mind the original trilogy. There's not, if every single time two people fight with lightsabers, there's a conversation before it. They don't just jump into it. You know, there's literally, there's not even a single conversation at all between Maul and, you know, Qui-Gon and, and Obi-Wan in, in the movie. You know, not so for, you know, that's one of the many great things about Clone Wars. They added some depth there. And, yeah, uh, uh, Balin says, you know, it is a fact that you have to destroy to create. And I quite appreciate, I, I like when villains are smart. And, you know, there is some, you know, the, that is something that you can come to realize. That by itself is not evil. The reason he's evil is that he embraces that. He doesn't try to fight it. You know, he doesn't say the the destruction, you know, we, we shouldn't destroy something that's good. We should only destroy the evil, you know. So, so yeah, quite appreciate. And, and it is one of those things, like, sometimes some people have been corrupted by, you know, understanding or at least thinking they understand something fundamental and not, you know, yeah, just feeling like, well, I'm just, this is the only way to go, you know, so really appreciated that. And, yeah, you know, temporarily Ahsoka does manage to stop the trip with, you know, by grabbing the, the map. And, let's see, yeah, and, and... Uh, Balin knocks her over the into the the water, playing mind games with Sabine Wren, and you know convincing her we have the same goal. You know you want Ezra, I want Thrawn. And the backup arrives and accomplish absolutely nothing. That was a little disappointing. I was wondering if one of the H's, either Hu Yang or Hira, would manage to join them on the trip since now the map has been destroyed. Nope. I guess Hira is just going to be talking to politicians for the last four episodes. That's a tiny bit of a letdown. I, I guess they wanted for... I, I do think there is something compelling to getting Sabine Wren into the the you know this this idea that she would be willing to risk Thrawn just to get Ezra back. I think that is compelling, and it is still possible that Ahsoka might be able to to go. And she's in that place, uh, the world between worlds. That's right. And, yeah, seemingly reunited with Anakin. And this is one of those things where I love cameos. I do. I hope that they have something compelling to do here. I did not really think that they had enough compelling to do with Anakin in the Obi-Wan show. But I have long been a defender of the actor, hold on, I'll have his name momentarily, uh, Hayden Christensen, I think under the right circumstances, he is amazing. I love him in Shattered Glass. And yeah, I, I, I did think his acting was good in, in Obi-Wan. And there was some really good stuff with him in, in that. But yeah, you know, I, I hope that they can come that they've come up with something really solid. Um, I do definitely think that there is a chance to. 
and I quite appreciated the the music at the end, going from this kind of, you know, the the subtitles call it warm music, and then the Vader theme, you know, that was because uh, it is this thing of you know, well, you know, is this? I suppose. Is this the Anakin from right after he was redeemed? And anyway, you know, we'll we'll find out, and that's that's legitimately interesting. There's there's something there, and I think that might be about. And I think this is the first time that the two actors, that Hayden Christensen and uh, hold on, Rosario Dawson, that they've actually shared the, the screen. So that's very cool. Um, too early to say if they have chemistry, but they are both very talented and know their characters really well. I think that might be... Uh, Jason still isn't really being... Utilize. I, I mean, I'm not saying that there's a lot they could do with him. I'm just saying it right now. It just feels like they're, you know, they brought him back to like hint. Oh, one day he'll be a Jedi or just some, you know. It's just like you can do something interesting with with child characters. We just saw it on Andor. Um, I think that might be what I have to say I'm a little mixed on the world between worlds I don't know if I love the idea of Star Wars having this you know time manipulation time travel thing you know that's how I felt about it on Rebels that's how I feel about it here for for now maybe they'll be able to to do something with it I do appreciate it is an incredibly cool concept And I guess we'll find out why on earth Anakin would be there. Because it's not really... I mean, it's not supposed to be like the afterlife. Yeah. Um, I think... Uh, right, right. Um, apparently, this this YouTuber I'm subscribed to, uh, Zach Milne Talks Movies. I apologize if I mispronounced the name. Um... He got very excited about Anakin returning, and, you know, he posted a video where it says Anakin and Ahsoka reaction, Hayden Christensen returns, and the the thumbnail also, in case you missed the, the name, the thumbnail also has Hayden Christensen's face, and it looks like it is a still from the episode. Don't go too hard on him. He got excited. We get excited. We're nerds. You know, he he wasn't like trying to spoil it for for people um yeah that is everything so yeah i definitely do think that this episode was better than the the third one which is really you know yeah um still love that one but i do you know so, yeah so far my two preferred episodes are the the even numbered ones two and four which I forget that I think that's yeah so like the Star Star Trek movies you know the good ones are the the even numbered ones and I do also you know overall do love all four um I think that might be um I yeah one one thing I gotta say I do not know how there's four more episodes. Like, the episode literally ends with them traveling to... I mean, I, get, I guess, is there a chance that it's going to take them a long time once they arrive in this unknown world to, to find Thrawn and Ezra? I guess there could be some conflict, you know, Ezra trying to stop Thrawn and Sabine trying to also stop Thrawn. Yeah, um... I hope that it's not going to end up with, like, one or two episodes that are just filler. Um, yeah. 
honestly, the the um, you know my prediction for this episode that I made last week, uh, thankfully, did not turn out to be true. You know, they are back to moving the plot forward. So maybe the, they got that out of their system with episode three. Here's hoping. But yeah, I am really excited. Um, later today, we're going to do an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode. Uh, the Bear and I Am Groot, season two. So, yeah. Um, that is it for this one. So, may the Force live long and prosper.